Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you what happens when you get things really small. So I'm going to be using some really small particles to show you what happens when they're introduced to heat and then also show you how you can use really small particles to actually prove the existence of atoms. So I have here a powder called Lycopodium clavatum. And what Lycopodium powder is, it's actually just common club moss seeds or spores. And they're extremely small and they have a very high surface area because they have little protrusions coming off of them, kind of like little spikes. And those spikes cause it to have a lot of surface area. Now when something has a lot of surface area, even if it's not very flammable, it can get a lot of oxygen to it. And when you have a lot of oxygen, basically anything becomes flammable. Lycopodium clavatum. <laughs> Now the reason this became so flammable is because there was so much oxygen available per surface area. So all you need to do is provide a little bit of heat and almost anything becomes flammable. That's why pure oxygen is so dangerous because oxygen in and of itself is not flammable, but provide enough oxygen to almost anything and it will burn. For example, we don't usually think of steel as being able to burn. So as I put it in the blowtorch here, it's not like it just automatically starts on fire. Nothing really happens. But if I were to increase the surface area per volume of this steel, then you can get a crazy violent reaction. You can see how you can just light it on fire here. And then if you give it plenty of oxygen, here's what happens. There we go. So this lycopodium powder in and of itself is not flammable, but if you give it just a bit more oxygen, then it becomes pretty flammable. Now not only does lycopodium have a very high surface area to volume ratio, but it's also pretty hydrophobic. So that when you put it in water, it forms this coating on top of the water. And if you put your finger in, your finger doesn't get wet. <laughs> Look how cool that is. I pull it out, my finger's not wet at all. It's just coated in this powder. Here it is again. <laughs> it's amazing. Now things that are hydrophobic means that they repel water. But what we often forget about things that are hydrophobic is it also means that they're attracted to air. And so one of the reasons that things are hydrophobic is because they keep a layer of air on them. So when I was sticking my finger in the water, the reason the water's never able to get to my finger is because there's actually a layer of air in between the water and my finger. And as long as that air is there, the water can't get to it. So actually, if you're able to remove air from the situation, then you can actually very easily make things that are normally hydrophobic become not very hydrophobic. Okay, so let's put our powder and water in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in this plastic ball here, and as it goes through the lycopodium, it's going to get coated in it. And it's going to stay coated with a little bit of air with lycopodium around it. But let's see what happens if we apply a vacuum around it now. So let's slowly put it in. So you can see that it's in the bottom there now. So you can see that now it's completely covered with the lycopodium. So it's not wet inside. But let's see what happens when we apply a vacuum now. You can see it losing the air around it, bubbling off of it. But now let's see what happens when we let air back in. Let's see if this ball is wet. Whoa, you can see it. You can see how it just got soaked with water because there's no longer air around it. So let's try to get it out of there. Whoa, see how the lycopodium now just dissolved in the water? 
because it's no longer hydrophobic now that we suck the air out around it. That's crazy, it's completely wet now, no longer hydrophobic, just because we put it in a vacuum. Now let's see if we can catch the dust coming off of it on fire. <laughs> so now that's a really interesting point here. That means that most of the time, the reason something is hydrophobic is because it's able to capture a minute amount of air on the surface of it. But once you remove that surface air, then it's no longer hydrophobic. And I showed this in a previous video with magic sand. So magic sand is the sand that when you put it in water, it never gets wet. You can pour it in the water, it looks pretty cool. And you can see that it kind of shimmers and shines. That's due to the reflective surface of the air-water interface. So it basically there's a bubble of air around the sand. But when I put the magic sand in the vacuum chamber, the vacuum chamber sucks the air out of it and the water is able to directly contact the surface of the magic sand, so it's suddenly no longer hydrophobic. So it may actually be more important for a hydrophobic substance to attract air than repel water because the air is what actually keeps the water off the surface. Then once you remove that air, then the water can, able, can contact it just like normal and it's no longer hydrophobic. Now this lycopodium is so small, each individual granule is around 30 microns in diameter. And when you have something that small, what's interesting is you can actually start to see brownie in motion. Now let me explain what brownie in motion is if you're not familiar with it. So we know that everything around us is made up of atoms, and those atoms and molecules are constantly jiggling and moving around. If they have a temperature above absolute zero, they're always moving. And because of this constant motion, it's actually a way to prove that these atoms and molecules actually exist. For example, let's say these Orbeez are my atoms or molecules. They're not just sitting there like this. They're actually always in constant motion because they have energy. They have kinetic energy and they're just like balls that are bouncing off each other. So they're continually in motion like this. But all of these atoms and molecules around us are too small to see. But what we can see is something bigger. So for example, let's say I was trying to prove that these Orbeez exist, but they're too small for me to see. But I can see a big ball like this. Well then all I do is I put my ball under the microscope and you'll notice that it slightly jiggles. So if you see a big thing like this kind of jiggling back and forth, you can actually deduce that the reason it's jiggling is because there's a bunch of smaller things constantly hitting it. And the constant bashing into it of these smaller balls is causing the bigger ball to kind of jitter around. So this constant jittering is called Brownian motion, and it's actually one of the first proofs of the atomic theory. It sounds kind of weird to say atomic theory because we're so used to talking about atoms and molecules now. But before we could use other methods to actually prove their existence, one of the only methods we could use is to look at bigger things jiggling around and assume that there's smaller things hitting them, like atoms and molecules. So today what I want to do is see if you can actually see brownie in motion by sticking these lycopodium powder granules in water and putting it on a slide under my microscope and seeing if we can actually see them jitter and move around a little bit. So all I do is get a drop of water Put some powder on it, and then put my top slide on. Then all you do is look at it under the microscope. Okay, so let's see if we can see these spores. That's just a bubble in there. So let's zoom in on these. Okay. You can zoomed in a little bit more, you can start to see these individual spores a little bit more. So we want to zoom in close enough where we can actually see the vibration caused by the constant movement of the water molecules. So let's zoom in a little bit more. Oh, we can see three of them right there. So you can see they're round because as I change the zoom, you can start to see the top of it, the middle of them, and the bottom of them. I'm just going to zoom it and focus it about right there. Okay, now I'm not touching it anymore. Let's see if we can see these guys move. 
You can see that one on the right slightly twisting a little bit. So you can see the one on the bottom right there. You can see it kind of jiggling and turning different directions a little bit. So this is called Brownian motion and it's completely random. It's dependent on the random motions of the water molecules bumping back and forth on this moss. So the reason we're not able to see some really big jiggling motion is because in comparison to the water molecules, these uh, lycopodium granules are very big. But if we can get some smaller balls in there, then those small balls will actually be a lot more visible jittery motion. So a way to do that is actually pretty easy. All you need is some milk mixed with water and put some food coloring in it, like I've done here. And then you just put a drop of it on your slide and put a glass slide over the top and now look what it looks like. So this is at 400 times magnification right now. And at this magnification, you can see those tiny little spheres of fat globules in there. They're now getting bumped around by the water molecules. So they're taking these random paths through the water. So this is amazing. You can totally see the jittery motion of those fat globules in there. So with something as simple as a microscope and some milk and food coloring or even some lycopodium, you can actually indirectly prove the existence of atoms and molecules. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions or comments about this video, let me know in the comments section. I'll try to get to them. And head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't checked out the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.